Good morning, once again. We want to continue our talk on sutras, as I mentioned yesterday. Today, we are going to focus our mind on Sabbhasa Sutta. It has been translated as all tankers or all tanks. Asura, uh, the intoxicants, I call it intoxicants because Asura in Pali and Sanskrit is used for something that uh, give you a kick. You brew it for a long time in your brewery. From time immemorial in Sansara, as human beings, animals, divine beings, one life after another, we build up these asavas. Asavas, in fact, are called influxes. When you brew something, you know, when you brew beer, alcohol, any kind of alcohol, you get all kind of ingredients put in a jar, bury it in the ground, keep it for a long period of time to ferment it. When, you, when it is fermented and take out and filter it and you drink, that gives you a real kick. So that is called asa. With our, with our awareness or not, particularly without our awareness, we build this asa in our samsaric existence. Therefore, at any moment when they pop up in our mind, they are very, very powerful. You cannot control it. Any tiny little thing can make you upset, angry, irritated. That kind of mental state is called asava. We can see this asava coming up in people's mind very often and they cannot control. That's why they have all kind of arguments, fights, and so forth. Anyway, that is the meaning of asava. In this discourse, Buddha says, on one occasion, <coughs> Buddha said, uh, as usual, he had the big course and said, big course, I shall teach you a discourse on the restraint of all things. All things I put as influxes, answers. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Say I did. Then Buddha said, he gives uh, the summary at first. Because I said that the distraction of chaos is for one who knows and sees, not for one who does not know and see. That is what's happening. You don't see as a rising and the you flare up. You burst because you are not mindful and you let it happen. 
and you make a very ugly scene. Then you know and see, you don't do that. Who knows and sees what? Wise attention and unwise attention. When one acts unwisely, unreasoned things arise and arisen things increase. That's what happens. When one attends wisely, unreasoned things do not arise and arisen things are abandoned. So, understanding is number one. Understanding of our own mental state. So we are the ones who are trying to train. We cannot train others. We must learn to train ourselves. In order to train ourselves, we always must keep looking at our own mind. This is very wonderful Vipassana instruction, Vipassana practice. In mindfulness practice, we always train ourselves to see us introspectively, see inside. Because then would the give the uh, summary is a wonderful this this discourse to where Buddha has given summaries at the beginning and he summed up everything at the end in this discourse. This is the summary at the very outset of the discourse. Because there are things that should be abandoned by saying that is one. There are things should be abandoned by restraining. Number two, there are things that should be abandoned by using. Number three, there are things that should be abandoned by enduring. Number four, there are things that should be abandoned by avoiding. Number five, there are things that should be abandoned by she moving number six, and there are things that should be abandoned by developing number seven. So he gave seven steps, seven ways of overcoming them. Number one is uh, seeing. Uh, then would that can each of them in some detail. What they should be abandoned by saying? Here because an untaught ordinary person who has no regard for the noble ones is unskilled and un 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 undisciplined in their dhamma who has no regard for true men, I would, yesterday also I mentioned, true men is really ambiguous. One can ask me various untrue men also. It should be replaced with the persons with integrity, persons with integrity, and is unskilled and undisciplined in their dhamma does not understand what things are fit for attention and what things are not unfit for attention. Since that is so, he attends to those things unfit for attention and he does not attend to those things that fit for attention. What is ordinary unskilled person? Word used in Pali is Putujjana. 
Putujana is the one who is exposed to all defilement. He can commit all kind of wrong things, unwholesome things. He can brew greed, hate, and delusion. He is careless. He doesn't, he is lazy. All kind of requirements can build up in that person's mind. That person is called Putujjana. Putujjana. So, when Buddha gave this summary of what ordinary person does, that person does not pay attention or attention to the things that should be paid attention to. And, uh, the, and one should pay attention to wrong things. Then would they explain it? What are the things unfit for attention and that they attend to? There are things such that when they, when they attend to them, unrecent things for sensual desire arises in him. And the arisen sensual desire increases. Unrecent things of being arises in him, and arisen things of being increases. Unrecent things of ignorance arise in him. Arisen things of ignorance increases. That is mean answer in Pali. They are called Kamasava, Bhavasava, Avijjasava. Kamasava, sensual desire increases. Sensual desires arising through eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body. These are called Pancha Kama Guna. Why? Called of sense pleasures. Why? And that is called sense. The influxes come through these doors here. I suppose doors. I door, ear door, nose door, tongue door, body door. These doors are all wide open. <laughs> they are wide open. So any time thieves can enter, when you don't close the door and lock it, thieves can come and come enter the mind. Therefore, they are called doors. Chapu Dwara, Sota Dwara, Jiva Dwara, Nokana Dwara, Aya Dwara, and so forth. Dwara, doors. Those we keep open. We forget to close the doors when you go out. These thieves can enter, our enemies can enter. That is called Kama Sava. Then there are the mind also all kind of open. For oh, Bhavasava. Bhavasava, I mentioned yesterday, Bhava. There are two kinds of Bhava. One kind of Bhava is called continuous thoughts arising in our mind. Continuous thoughts, full of greed, hatred, and delusion. They are called Kamma. And in Pali, it's called Kamma Bhava. Kamma Bhava means all kind of wholesome, even unwholesome, unwholesome, and even wholesome. Thought arises in our mind. And these thoughts have the potential of reproducing. They have the gene, the spiritual gene, to reproduce. Just like any other reproductory 
process as a gift. Similarly, these thoughts that have, uh, metaphorically speaking, genes to reproduce potential. And therefore, they are called Kamma Bhava. And then, of course, when you plant these seeds in the mind, in consciousness, uh, the, the field of uh, uh, karma, this seed of rebirth is generated. Vinyanam bija, karma ketta, and karma sineo, raising is the water. So we put these things in the mind, and then of course they will germinate in next life. That is called bhavasava. Or kamasa, bhavasava. Bhavasava, two types. Kama bhava, vipaka bhava. Then avijjasava. Avijja means ignorance. It is uh, all here a sentence of ignorance arising and the sense of ignorance increases. When you do not pay attention and do not restrain our senses, then this, uh, this can happen. Uh, therefore, these things change unfit for attention that he attends to. And what are the things fit for attention that he does not attend to? There are things such that when he attends to them, the unreason things of sensual desire does not arise in him. And arisen sensual desire is abandoned. And unreason things of being does not arise in him. And arisen things of being is abandoned. The unreason ignorance does not arise in him. And arisen ignorance abandoned. And there are things fit for attention that he does not attend to. By attending to those things unfit for attention, and by not attending to the things fit for attention, both unreason things arise in him and reason things increase. Now, this is one. Then, this is how it is unwisely. This is how it is unwisely. And this is a uh, what do you call six kind of ways of paying uh, attention unwisely. Unwise attention means Ayoni Somanasikara. Ayoni Somanasikara. We will explain this little later if you have time. Was I in the past? Now, <clears throat> before I go through this, I want to mention that when one attains enlightenment, when I attain the fourth jhana and attain the supernatural powers, gain supernatural powers, uh, suppose one attains the fourth jhana and then practice supra mundane practices, attain stream entry, 
once returned, never returned and arrived through, then that person would be able to recall his previous life. That is called Pubbe Nivasa Anusati Jnana. With that purity of mind, if one recalls his previous life, he thinks not in this way. This is unenlightened person's way of thinking. So therefore we must not confuse this with the other. You know, Pubbhyanivasana Suti Jnana, the, the special knowledge of seeing previous lives is very pure and clean without this kind of thinking. This kind of thinking, they think with unmindful attention. The one who attains full enlightenment and recalling his previous life does so with mindful attention. Vipassana jnana. This is not Vipassana jnana. And therefore we must make the distinction, understand the distinction between these two. Because when we say this, somebody can question, how about those who have attained enlightenment recalling his previous life? In order to clarify that doubt, I won't, I mention this right now. This unmindful un attention, un the person who does mind attention unwisely, I only saw Manatagara paying unmindful attention, think, was I in the past? Here I is the person assumes that there is I, quote, unquote, I, the one letter I, permanent, eternal, everlasting, unmutable something. And he said, was I in the past that particular I? Was I not in the past? What was I in the past? What was I in the past means I was with I was a, a Brahmi, Kshatriyas, Shudras, Vices, White Man, Black Man, Yellow Man, Pink Man, Brown Man, Asian, African, like that. Was I an African? Was I an American? Was I Sri Lankan? Like this, what was I? How was I in that part in the life? Was I was rich, poor, ugly, beautiful, educated, uneducated, like that? How was I? Also I, that particular I. Having been what? What did I become in the past? Having been poor, have I become rich? <laughs> have I been rich, have I become poor? Have I been uneducated, have I been educated? Like that. He, he thinks of his status in previous life. Shall I be in the future? The same way. Shall I not be in the future? What shall I be in the future? How shall I be, uh, I shall be in the future? And that is about the future. Then, having been what, what shall I become in the future? Or, he is inwardly perplexed about the present, thus, am I? That means, am I? That means I exist in here. That particular I exists here. Or 
am I not? That I does not exist here. What am I? How am I? Where has where has this been come from? Where this I? Always remember this personality. They think that I exist in twenty different ways. For instance, I give you one example so that you can apply your knowledge to see how this twenty. Become form this body. Form is through kang atato samanupasati. See the body as I, through one thing or another. The I as a form. Form is in the I, or I is in the form. Let me repeat it. I and form are identical. Atta to samanupat. And then form has I or form is in the I or I in is in the form. Form and I are identical. I has the form. Number two, form is in the eye. Eye is in the form. Four. So you apply this to feeling, perception, volition of formations, and consciousness. You have five aggregates. For each aggregate, there are four ways of assuming, attributing I. Four ways. Therefore, there are twenty types of I. So the person thinks, where this I came from, which from which life, from divine life, human life, animal life, ghost life, goblin life, spiritual life, priest life, and from which life this I came. Where will I go? Where will this I, or where will where will where will it go after death? Where this I will go? Not sure. This is the way. I think here we have uh, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixteen ways. Sixteen ways. And all these sixteen ways of thinking arise in his mind because of unmindful reflection. Unmindful reflection. When he attains unwisely in this way. One of six views arise in him. It, it doesn't end there, but it extends in arising six other views. That is self exists for me, as I mentioned earlier. Six self exists for me arises in him as true and established. That view, or the view no self exists in me, arises in me in a true and established, or view I perceive self with self, arises in him as true and established, or the view I perceive not self with self, arises in established in him, and then or Will I perceive self with not self arises in him and established and true and established it in him, or or else he has some such view as this. It is this self of mind that speaks, feels, and experiences here 
and uh, the results of good and bad actions. Now, this is the view that uh, Venerable uh, Sati in uh, Ma Tanna Sankhaya Sutra, uh, you can see in Madhyamanikaya. Venerable Sati said, it is the same self, same consciousness that goes from life to life. So Buddha reprimanded him and refuted his uh, own will. So, but this self of mind is permanent, everlasting, eternal, not subject to change, and it will endure as long as eternity. That is eternal, eternistic view. This speculative view because is called the ticket of views, uh, wilderness views, the contortion of views, the vacillation of views, the fetter of views. Now, uh, this answer turns into fetter. Fetter, there are 10, they are called Samyodhana. Fettered by the factor of views, though they complicated. The untaught ordinary person is not freed from the birth, aging, and death from sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. He is not freed from suffering, I say. Now, well taught disciple is just the opposite. He doesn't have that. And therefore, he will not uh, come up. He will not suffer in cancer. Now, what takes unfit for attention are these things, these things. And then, uh, we go to the particular steps, seven steps of overcome this change, this intoxicants. Number one, tends to be abandoned by restraining, samvara. There are samvara, there are five kinds of samvara. They are called Sila Sangara, then uh, uh, okay. uh, Sila Sangara, Sati Sangara, Jnana Sangara, Virya Sangvara and Khanti Sangvara. Now, Sila Sangvara is restraining by two virtues, moral principles. And it has explain the restraining to virtue is illustrated by avoiding unsuitable seats and resort, seat and resort, the place. Restraining through uh, jnana samara or knowledge is explained by uh, repeated practice of uh, wisely, wise consideration. Then restraining through energy is explained by removing unwholesome thoughts. That is four kind of energy we have to apply. Restraining through patience is illustrated by the patient enduring with patience. 
and restraining uh, through the seal and morality, seal is Anvara, restraining through mindfulness, such as Anvara, restraining through jnana, knowledge, knowledge, and restraining through effort, restraining through patience. I think restraining means restrain our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. This is called Chakuna Sangaro Sadhu. Chakuna Sangaro Sadhu. Sadhu Sotena Sangaro. Sadhu Dhani Sangaro. Sadhu Divhaya Sangaro. Sadhu Kaya Sangaro. Sadhu Manasa Sangaro. Sabbat Sangaro Sadhu. Sabbatukha Pamuchyata Buddha said. We restrain through our, as I mentioned, Dona keeps eyes open to the to evil thing. Restrain our eyes. And this kind of restraint is restraints I explain in more detail in uh, another discourse for Vitakra Sutta, removal of distracting thought discourse in the same uh, book, Majjhimika. Uh, I don't have time to explain all these things now. Now we start this session from in the Sambhasa uh, Sutta. One place Bhikkhu should be abandoned by restraining. Here Bhikkhu reflecting wisely advice with the eye. Eye faculty restraining. While test relaxation and fever right arise in one who abides with the eye faculty. Uh, Unrestrained. Uh, there are no taste relaxation or fever in one who abides with the eye faculty restrained. Now, When we want to restrain our eyes, we have to be very careful not to develop greed, hatred, and delusion through by seeing object, by seeing object. There is a discourse called uh, Indriya Bhavana Sutta in Madhyamikaya. There uh, was a man called Para Sariya. Para Sariya. One of the disciples of Para Sariya came to see the Buddha. And Buddha asked him, What does Para Sariya teach? He said, He teaches to restrain our senses. Then Buddha said, asked him, How does he teach a way to restrain your senses? He said, don't look at objects. Restrain your ears, don't hear sound. Then Buddha said, well, in that case, those who are born blind, how will you restrain? Because they don't see objects. Then those who are born deaf are restrained because they cannot hear. Those who are dumb, cannot talk, restrain or speech. And so forth. And then Buddha said, but in Arya Sivinaya, the Buddha's Vinaya discipline is called Arya Sivinaya. In noble one's training, uh, Restraining our senses means not that. How can you, you have good eyes, you, have, you can hear well, you have good ears. So naturally you hear sound, naturally you see object. When you see object, then be mindful not to let greed, hatred and delusion arise through the object. 
Object doesn't have read. Object doesn't have read. Object doesn't have uh, hatred. Object doesn't have delusion. Where the great hatred and delusion are in our mind. So when we subject, don't let this object cause you to arise greed, hate, and delusion. Pleasant object you see, greed can arise under any pleasant object, what you call under any pleasantness. There is an underlying tendency called greed. In unpleasant object, there is underlying tendency of hatred, not in the object, but because it's unpleasantness arises in your mind, resentment can arise. That is the underlying tendency. When you see an object, you are confused. The confusion is not in the object. You allow confusion to arise in your mind because of your unmindfulness. So, the, that is how Buddha taught fresh training senses. This is very beautiful discourse you can see in my given regard. Indriya Bhavana Sutta. Indriya Bhavana Sutta. Very beautiful discourse. So, uh, sorry, you there are no trends, relaxation, or fever in one who abides with the eye faculty restrain. We restrain in this way. We restrain our eyes through which greed does not, should not arise. We restrain our ears through which greed does not arise. Any hatred and delusion does not arise in our mind when we are mindful. So this is a way of training ourselves to be mindful. To be mindful. Then, that is the way of abandoning some change. Then, step number two, change to be abandoned by using. What change should be, what change people should be abandoned by using? Here, we could reflect in why she uses the robe only for the protection of cold, for protection of heat, for contact with gas flies, mosquitoes, wind, the sun, and the creeping things, and only for the purpose of concealing the private parts. This is the purpose of wearing cloth. Especially for monks, this is for especially for monks, but this can apply for lay people as well. Of course, people have various other purposes of wearing clothes. Uh, that is why every year new fashion comes into the market, because their purposes vary from time to time, place to place, age to age, vary. Monk's purpose of wearing robe is the same all over from, from the time of the Buddha to Naman into the future. The same purpose. But uh, by the way, the style doesn't change. Same style. Old fashion. No new fashion. <laughs> Monk, the same. <laughs> I remember a lot of things about this road when I came to this country first. Some people asked me when they saw me on the street wearing the robe, some people come to me and ask me, why don't you wear some decent cloth, man? <laughs> <laughs> because this looked like, you know, trapping ourselves up with a blanket. It is not. <laughs> Decent, but it's a very shabby looking. <laughs> but 
I had many such remarks I heard when I was first here. Because those days there were no monks in the United States. So anyway, this is the purpose of the approach. With mindful reflection, we must have this all. Not as a fashion, not just to show off. These are the purpose. Protection from cold, sun, heat, uh, from mosquitoes, their flies and so forth. And above all, to cover our nakedness. Now, nakedness is not acceptable in the civilized society, uh, except of course there are some uh, ascetics in India, even today, they are fully naked. Why they are naked? Because they don't have desire even for clothes to show their simplicity that they don't have even a desire even for clothes. They are called niganthas. Anyway, then replating uh, uses arms to this is what we recite when we eat. You might, you might have listened to it already uh, twice a day. Morning and noon, we recite this. What is this? He uses arms neither for amusement, nor for intoxication, nor for the sake of physical beauty and attractiveness, but only for the endurance and continuance of the body uh, for ending discomfort and for uh, assisting the holy life. Considering this, I shall, uh, I shall uh, terminate all feeling without arousing new feeling and I shall uh, be healthy and blameless and shall live in comfort. <clears throat> We eat this food to not to build up our muscles and go to boxing arena and punch or do some wrestling. We eat this uh, in order to continue this body. Even put the arms eat food for ending discomfort. That means discomfort of uh, hunger or not increasing new introducing new pain, new pain by overeating. We should not be gluttonous. Eat sufficient amount of food. Ahare matanyata, bhojanamike matanyu. Knowing the limit of our eating so that we shall uh, overcome our own feeling of hunger and not introducing new feeling by overeating and also to make our life, holy life, comfortable. Brahmacharya Nukkahai to assist our Brahmacharya life. Then also uses the uh, resting places like kutis, houses and so forth, for protection for cold, for protection from heat, and uh, for protection for contact with dead flies, mosquitoes, wind, the sun, and increased uh, creeping things, and only for the purpose of warding off uh, Paris, of uh, climate and for enjoying retreat. So, these are the purpose of using shelter and medicine. Also, we use uh, for protection from rising affliction feeling and for the benefit of good health. So, we all know that we all sick and then we have to use medicine. And this medicine we use not for any uh, pleasure. So, 
uh, why change relaxation to the uh, mind arise in one who does not use requisite thus there are no change relaxation or fever in one who uses them thus these are all things that should be abandoned by using <clears throat> and then um, we go to the next one Things to be abandoned by enduring. Enduring is abandoned one thing, that is Kanti Samara. Uh, what we mentioned, five kinds of restraining, this is called Kanti Samara. What thing should be uh, abandoned by enduring? Here, because reflecting wisely, they are cold and heat, hunger and thirst and contact with dead flies, mosquitoes, wind, the sun, creeping things, the injurious, ill-spoken, unwholesome words, uh, addition bodily feelings that are painful, racking, sharp, piercing, disagreeable, and distressed, and uh, menacing of life. Now, this is every, this is very important for everyday life, especially when we live together in a community. These things can happen. Any tiny little thing can irritate people because they don't have patience. Can't it? And the Buddha very clearly mentioned the things that we have to endure. Uh, not only natural things like um, uh, cold, heat, hunger, thirst, and uh, conflict, contact with gas, gas, mosquitoes, and so forth, so on and so forth, but endure ill spoken unwholesome words and there is a bodily feeling that are painful. Sometimes somebody can speak very unmindfully, harsh word, irritating word, wrapping, sharp, piercing, disagreeable, and distressing. There is a very beautiful discourse one when we sometimes I like to make cross reference to other discourses when I mention these things. There is a very beautiful discourse called Kakachukama Sutta. Kakachukama Sutta. Kakacha is the saw, saw, cutting saw, Kakacha. The simile of so, cutting saw. It is, of course, very stark, very powerful simile. In that simile, in that discourse, Buddha says, if somebody cuts your limbs one by one, if somebody cuts your hand, start cutting fingers, then cutting wrist, whole hand. While they are cutting your hands and legs and so forth, still you should not lose your patience. Even if your lips are cut off by somebody, don't lose your patience. I mean, that, of course, is not possible for anybody. But Buddha went to that extent to illustrate the benefit of practicing patience, let alone any minor things. And therefore, patience is the, one of the best austere practice 
కాంతి పరమంత పో ముందు చెట్టు కాంతి పరమంత పో పేషెన్స్ ఈజ్ ద హైయెస్ట్ పోస్టియర్ ప్రాక్టీస్ తపస్ మీన్స్ పోస్టియర్ ప్రాక్టీస్ పేషెన్స్ అండ్ దోర్ దట్ బై ప్రాక్టీస్ ఇన్ దట్ పేషెన్స్ వీ క్యాన్ ఎంజాయ్ సెవెన్ థింగ్స్ డిఫికల్టీస్ అండ్ ఓవర్కమ్ అవర్ గ్రీట్ హేటెడ్ అండ్ డిల్యూషన్ then next thing is uh, tend to be abandoned by avoiding that is seela samvara here bhikkhu reflect why is the avoid uh, wild elephant wild horse and wild bull wild dog snake stumps and uh, bramber pack then uh, shesh cliffs uh, cesspit and the sewer now i heard somebody who is unmindful did not know how to apply this uh, this way of overcoming tens uh in uh, the monk was practicing meditation metta and so forth and he went to show his that the power of practicing metta uh, and went to a forest and uh, met a wild elephant and he want to show his practice power of virtue and when to when near the elephant elephant came and crushed him to death buddha said don't do that <laughs> avoid elephants avoid tigers cobra python says pool if you want to show your metta or virtue do you jump into a pool pool of filth no avoid it cliffs don't try to show your virtue by going going and standing on the edge of a cliff and meditate you will fall asleep and fall down and kill don't do that so i want that so why is person does not do that then tend to be abandoned by removing what tend should be abandoned by removing here a beku reflect wisely does not tolerate and arise uh, or go and arise and thought thought the sensual desire abandons it removes it does remove it and annihilate it he does not tolerate arise and thought of ill will arise and thought of uh, cruelty these are the three kind of thoughts the opposite of right thoughts what the right thoughts three right thoughts thought of renunciation nekam sankalpa thought of uh, metta avyapa sankalpa thought of uh, avihinsa uh, compassion avihinsa sankalpa these are three wholesome thoughts among noble age for that so a thought of sensual desire is opposite of thought of renunciation thought of ill will is opposite of metta thought of uh, cruelty is opposite of compassion when these unnoticed thoughts arise in your mind 
by all means try to avoid them remove them by practicing mindfulness practice the danger of unwholesome desire danger of ill will danger of cruelty these are dangerous thoughts not beneficial thought beneficial thought meaningful thought thought of thought that gives you peace and happiness then tends to be avoided uh, abandoned by developing this is the number 7 what are the thought to be developed reflecting this is here a big reflecting why they develop the mindfulness of the enlightened effect which is supported by seclusion discussion cessation and ripening in feeling pushment this uh, qualification uh, uh, repeated for the remaining six factors of enlightenment number one is seven factors of enlightenment are there why seven seven factors of enlightenment are uh, used for uh sleepiness and restlessness to overcome sleepiness and restlessness when sleepiness arises develop the practice of mindfulness factor energy factor and joy factor when restlessness and worry arises practice tranquility factor concentration factor and equanimity factor now six seven is mindfulness sati sabbat gamini mindfulness balances everything keep looking at this side and that side like a needle of a balance you know scale, scale when you have a scale not the this bathroom scale that we use these days but the scale used a asian scale asian scale has a bar like this and two sticks and buckets in the center is a needle when you put something to this side that side goes down then the needle goes this way if you put something therefore to balance it you got to put something here on the other basket then the needle will remain like that so the mindfulness is like the needle in the center so needle shows going this way or this way then you add to this side or this side according to the movement of the needle that is mindfulness factor that is why there are seven factors of enlightenment seven factors three for uh sleepiness and drowsiness three for restlessness and worry when restlessness and worry arises don't practice the uh, tranquility factor you know equanimity factor practice mindfulness effort joy that is so friend this discourse also is a wonderful discourse complete practice of meditation mindfulness is invited in this discourse so i hope you all keep learning i think you might have read this number 2 discourse in the madhyamika number 2 you might have read it many times but i advise you to read it again and again and digest the meaning of this discourse then you will be very very happy safe home to attain liberation thank you